This video is regarding Hepatitis B serology. Firstly, since Hepatitis B serology is so unique and complex that it's studied separately, you should also remember that from all the Hepatitis viruses, Hepatitis B virus is the only DNA virus, and that too, it's double-stranded. All the other Hepatitis viruses are RNA viruses and they are single-stranded. DNA, and that too double-stranded, is more complicated than RNA that too single-stranded. I like to remember the mnemonic GAMED. That is the immunoglobulins from greatest to least in number within our body. So IgG are generally more in number than IgMs and IgD are the least in number. That is because immunoglobulin G are formed to fight and prevent infection over the long run and so have a very long life in the body. So, usually, when an infection attacks the body, the body first produces IgMs to fight off the infection. That is, until it starts producing immunoglobulin G. Immunoglobulin G will stay in the body for years. Since our birth, since our, birth our body has been fighting off infections. So, IgGs have been accumulating for years and years. That is why they are greatest in number, as compared to IgM at least. Next, we cover the hepatitis B virus itself. The hepatitis B virus has three antigens of note. The surface antigen, the core antigen, and the E antigen. As the name suggests, a hepatitis B surface antigen is present on the surface of the virus, while the core antigen and the E antigens are present within the virus itself. Hepatitis B surface antigen. This is the bad boy antigen. Your body is most concerned with getting rid of it. It's all about our body's fight against the hepatitis B surface antigen. S is also for symptoms. So the greater quantity of hepatitis B surface antigen in your blood, the more likely it is for you to develop symptoms. Hepatitis B E antigen. The E antigen is a marker of viral replication. So the more hepatitis B E antigen in the blood, the more the virus is partying in your body and replicating like crazy, kind of like rabbits. And since they're so actively re reproducing, they love to spread the love. That's why the E antigen is also a strong marker of infectability or transmission. In other words, the more hepatitis B E antigen there is in the blood, the more likely or the easier it is for you to transmit infection to others. The bottom line, it's all about the hepatitis B surface antigen, which represents infection, versus IgG against the hepatitis B surface antigen, which, which represents immunity. Once the body produces IgG against the surface antigen, you're good to go on with your life. In other words, once you develop IgG against the surface antigen, congratulate yourself. You have just developed immunity against hepatitis B infection. You've just been cured. Yay! Unfortunately, it takes a while for IgGs to develop against the surface antigen, about six months or so. Therefore, in the meantime, the body tries to fight off the virus with antibodies that are directed against the core antigen. Initially, the body produces IgMs against the core antigen and then IgGs against the core antigen if, if it takes that long. One more time, you need to memorize this and engrave it within your head. IgG against the surface antigen means that you are cured. So if you find this in the blood, it means you are cured. If there is no IgG against the surface antigen, that means you are not cured. So IgG against surface antigen means cured. IgG against surface antigen is not present means that you're not cured. This is a typical graph of the hepatitis B serology. It seems quite complicated, but I'll attempt to make a sim simpler version. This is the simplified graph. Here we can see the dotted lines represent the viral antigens. The red line here is the hepatitis B surface antigen and the blue line or blue dotted line here is the hepatitis B E antigen. So this is what the virus is doing within our body. This thick line here, this is the immunoglobulin G produced against the surface antigen. This is our body's main response. As you can see, IgGs against the surface antigen take about six months or so to develop. Let's go through the graph bit by bit. Initially, the virus enters the body. 
After an incubation period of at least one month, it begins to replicate within the body. Thus, the amount of hepatitis B surface antigen as well as hepatitis B E antigen begins to rise. Remember the two clinical significances of high E antigen titers mentioned previously? That being increase in viral replication and the increase in likelihood of transmitting the, transmitting the infection. Initially, you don't have many symptoms, but as the virus replicates and replicates and the hepatitis B surface antigen levels go up and up, they start peaking. That's when you develop clinical symptoms, such as jaundice, fever, and right upper quadrant pain. This is represented by the yellow box here. Now your body is seriously worried, so it starts developing antibodies. Your body wants to develop those IgGs against the surface antigen as soon as possible and send them in. But those IgGs are not ready yet, so your body needs more time. Therefore, the body starts producing antibodies against the core antigen instead. Of course, first it produces IgMs against the core antigen and sends them in. These antibodies do their best to fight off the viral particles and prevent them from reproducing like rabbits. Thus, the hepatitis B surface antigen and E antigen levels start dropping. Finally, after about 6 months or so, the body starts producing the, the much needed IgG antibodies against hepatitis B surface antigen, and thus the infection is e effectively eradicated. A so-called window period exists during the course of the infection. This is the time period when the IgM against the core antigen is fighting off the vir virus so well that the virus particles become so few that they aren't detected on serology. In other words, there is no hepatitis B surface antigen on serology testing. However, the body still hasn't produced enough IgGs against the surface antigen. In other words, the infection has still not been eradicated. In other words, the patient still has hepatitis B infection, despite the absence of surface antigen on serology. If you were to check the serology of such a patient during the window period, you would not find any surface antigen or E antigens within their blood. So you might think that this person is not infected. However, you will also not find IgGs against the surface antigen. So you would think that this person is not cured either. But you would find antibodies against the core antigen, either IgM or IgG. And that would tell you that this person is in the window period and still infected. Solving serology questions. First of all, memorize this. If hepatitis B surface antigen is present on serology, that means you currently have infection. If IgG against the surface antigen is present, that means you have won the battle, either you're cured or you're vaccinated. One more time. If hepatitis B surface antigen is positive on serology, that means you are infected. If IgG against the surface antigen is positive on serology, that means either you are cured from a previous infection or you were vaccinated. The only exception to this is the window period. This is when you are infected despite having a negative hepatitis B surface antigen on serology. So in this case, you would not find hepatitis B surface antigen on serology, so you might think that this person is not infected. However, if you look at the IgGs against the surface antigen, you would also not find it in, on serology. It would be absent. Therefore, this person would not be cured either. However, if you look at the antibodies against core antigen, you will find them. Initially, there will be IgM against the core antigen, but if your body takes a longer time than expected to make that IgG against the surface antigen, your body will start making IgGs against the core antigen as well. It's all about the timing. In other words, IgG against the core antigen just means you've had the infection for a while now compared to, IgG, compared to IgM against the core antigen. If you have IgG against the surface antigen, that means you are either cured from a previous infection or you are vaccinated. If you have IgG against the surface antigen, there are only, and I repeat, only two possibilities. Either you are cured or you are vaccinated. If there are IgGs against the core antigen as well, that means you were cured from a previous infection. But if there are no IgGs against the core antigen, 
that means you were vaccinated. That's because antibodies against core antigen only appear if the person was actually infected by the virus. HPV vaccination contains hepatitis B surface antigen particles only. So the body only produces antibodies against the surf surface antigen and not against the core antigen. Hepatitis B is all about the surface antigen. So whenever there is a serology question, the first thing you should do is to look at the presence of the surface antigen and antibodies against the surface antigen. As soon as I see positive hepatitis B surface antigen, I know right away there is an ongoing infection. The absence of antibodies against the surface ant antigen tells me the person is not cured yet. Therefore, this is a serology of an infected person. If the antibodies against the core antigen are IgM, that means this is an acute infection. And if the antibodies against the core antigen are IgG, that means this is a chronic infection. Question number two. Once again, the first thing I do is to look at the hepatitis B surface antigen. As soon as I see negative hepatitis B surface antigen, I think to myself that there is no ongoing infection. So the so I think the person might be cured. However, when I look at the antibodies against the surface antigen, they are negative. That means this person cannot be cured. The presence of antibodies against the core antigen tells me there must have been some infection. So something seems fishy. This is the window period. The antibodies against the core antigen are doing a brilliant job at keeping the surface antigen levels so low that they are undetectable. But still, the person has not been cured yet because there is no antibodies against the surface antigen. Question number three. First thing I do is I look at the presence of surface antigen. As soon as I see that there is no surface antigen that is present, that means this person is not infected. Then I look at the antibodies against the surface antigen and I see that they are positive. As soon as I see positive antibodies against the surface antigen, I know right away this person is either cured or has been vaccinated. The presence of antibodies against the core antigen tells me this person must have had an infection in the past. Question number four. Once again, there are no surface antigen. Therefore, this person is not currently infected. However, when I look at the antibodies against the surface antigen, they are positive. As soon as I see positive IgGs against the surface antigen, I know right away this person is either cured or has been vaccinated. The absence of antibodies against the core antigen tells me this person must have been vaccinated in the past. Thank you very much.